statistics and excel correlation calculation with strange result get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds looking forward to a smooth soothing excel here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff, anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP you see what we did with like with the letters and this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple CPA thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you can get to the heart of the practice problem, the blank tab, it's a blank worksheet so we can practice formatting these cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing. We're looking at correlations once again, two different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation between them. Are the data points moving in alignment with each other to some degree? And if there is a mathematical relationship, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship? If there is a cause and effect relationship, the next logical question would be, what is the causal factor in that relationship? This time we're looking at some two generic data sets with few data points so we can focus in on the heart of what we're looking at, which is the unusualness of the results of this particular scenario. And we'll do our normal kind of calculations for the correlation and we'll get a result that's a little bit less than what we would expect from it. The point being that we can't depend totally on any kind of statistics or one statistical calculation generally. We still have to, to analyze uh, what is happening so that we can get the most out of whatever data that we are looking at. So let's go back to the blank tab and build this out. So I'm going to first format the entire worksheet by selecting the triangle up top, right clicking on the selected cells. We're going to format those cells as we do every time. I like to make it currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar signs, no decimals to start off with. We're doing our generic data. I'm going to say control up and scroll in a bit. Generic data, so I'm just going to call it X and Y. X and Y. Let's make the whole thing bold too, because I like to work. I like to be bold, not all the time, but just when home tab font group bold when you're recording. That's what the, that's what my producer tells me. Got to be you got to be bold when you're when you're doing your screencast. So we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the home tab. Let's go to the home tab alignment center. This. Let's also hit the drop down and make this black and white. All right. And then so there we have it. And I can make them all skinnier. Let's make these skinnier too. We don't need it that wide because we're just going to have some numbers in there. And then we'll list this thing out. So the first data set is just going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then zero. And the second data set is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and seven. So if you were to look at these two data sets and you're trying to say, is there a mathematical relationship between them? Just looking at the two data sets, you would say, well, it looks like kind of they are moving together uh, for a, a much, of the, much of the process here. 
So that would be our, our general sense if we were just to like take a look at the data. Let's do the calculations with it. Let's make a skinny C over here. Skinny C, there it is. And let's copy over the X and the Y headers. X tab, this equals the Y tab. Format paint, let's just format paint this one over. Home tab, clipboard, format painter. Paint that on over here. And do our mean calculation and our standard D. And so this is first one's going to be equal to the average, just like we've seen before. So I'll do it fairly quickly because this is not new stuff. If you've seen some of our prior practice problems on this, and if you haven't, then you should go take a look because they are excellent. And then we go to the home tab. We go to the number group. Let's decimalize this thing. Let's just copy it to the right this time with the fill handle, drag in that fill handle to the right, which will format it and give us the relative formula. Let's do the standard D now. Standard D for the sample. Standard D dot S. So this is going to be tab, picking up the X data, control shift down, enter, decimalizing it, home tab, number group, decimalize, fill handle, grabbing that fill handle, dragging the fill handle to the right, and the standard D for Y calculating as you can see. Let's go ahead and select these two cells up top and Skinnerize them. Skinnerizing the cell. And then we will copy over our correlation formula. So we'll do our correlation calculation right here. So we'll bring this down and put it right there so we can see what we are doing. And that's too big. Uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to make a skinny G now. Skinny G. Skinny G. This is going to be X. Well, let's just copy over the X and Y data. Do our normal calculation on this. I'm just going to copy it over. Paste it right here. And let's insert another column. I'm going to select the entire column Y or I. Right click and insert. And then we're going to say this is going to be Z of x so we're going to calculate the z scores calculate the z scores for all the x's all the y's sum them up divide by the count n minus one the count being one two three four five six minus one all right so we're going to say this equals the z scores calculated brackets this number the first x minus the the mean I'm going to say F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the letter, the number, the E, the 2, so that when we copy it down, that cell doesn't move down, closing up the brackets and dividing it by the standard D, which is the 1.87 F4 on the keyboard. Once again, dollar sign before the E and the 3, so when we copy it down, that don't move down. Let's hit enter. Let's decimalize home tab. Number group, decimalize, double click in the fill handle to drop it down. Let's do the same for the Y's. Why? Because that's how you do stuff. This is going to be the Z of Y, let's say. And then let's format paint it. Home tab, clipboard, format paintbrush, format painting. Calculating the z-scores for all of the y's equals brackets. The first one minus the mean for the y. F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 2. So that you don't lose that number when you move it down. Let's divide it then by the standard D for the y. F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 3. Don't you see? Let's hit enter and put some dots, some decimals here. Home tab. Number group, decimalize, double click in the fill handle to drop it down. Okay, now we'll, we've done the Z's for the X and the Y's. We'll now multiply each of those Z's together. So we're going to say Z of X times Z of Y. And I'll format paintbrush it again. Home tab, clipboard, paintbrush painting it down and then we're going to say this equals z of x times z of y decimalize it home tab number group decimalize and once again dropping it down with the fill handle by double clicking and then let's make all of these a little bit more skinnerized so i'm going to go from h to l h to l so we're going to go there we go 
and so let's make them a little bit thinner and so okay so then uh we have the whole top bit but i need to sum up this column that'll be the numerator and then the denominator is n minus one so let's make a skinny m and do that last calculation in the n in the n so i'm going to call this calculation the r or core correlation with an e even though it sounds like an a when you do it there's this r r e even though it's sound when i say it i say it with an a sound but that's english spelling for you whatever sum of z x z x times z y you just don't say it right you don't say things good that's why whatever i say things good this is going to be the sum let's put in the outer column equals the sum brackets of these i know how to speak i speak american here anyways home tab let's add some decimals did i sum this sum in this up home tab number group decimalize in it and it, it, well, it comes out to zero that's the point of our practice problem i got distracted so it sums up to zero and then we're going to say this is going to be the n minus one let's put some a colon for our sub calculation and then this is going to be n space space this is going to be uh this is going to be less one and this is going to be n minus one so n is going to be the count so we'll say equals count brackets and then i'll count these oh hold on a second so we'll just count those meaning there's one two three four five six rows less one let's put an underline here for formatting sakes for formatting sake can't for formatting sake this is going to be six minus one or five Let's put an underline under it for formatting sake. And then let's indent these for fancy formatting sake. Home tab, alignment, indent. Home tab, alignment, indent. And this is gonna be the R correlation, which will be equal to the zero over the five, which is of course zero, even if we decimalize it. So that's the point that we want to get to we're like okay wait a second it comes out to a correlation of zero which would mean zero correlation but when you look at it intuitively we probably want to say well it looks like these two things are moving together quite consistently until of course that last point and that's where we have to we can't that's where we have to say we can't just rely on any one statistics oftentimes uh because we have to we have to then look at it from different angles so if we were to look at this in different angles we would say i don't know if that's telling me the whole story about the correlation or relationship between these data points given the fact that this outlier is throwing everything off obviously if i remove the outlier they would be perfectly correlated right so and that's just the 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 beware story let's go ahead and and plot this thing out if I grab this and I go into my insert up top and we go into the charts and we do a scatter plot, you can see what's happening here. So we can see uh, what is happening. Uh, hold on a sec. I think I messed it up. You messed it up. Okay. I didn't want to grab that. Excel, you know what I'm doing stop being stupid oh. okay so let's get rid of this and then let's label this thing plus button here axis titles starting with the x which is always the left data by default so there's the x and then the y which is equal to the y now remember that here we don't i don't know if there's a causal factor or anything because we have random data that is happening uh here so we're just looking if there's a mathematical relationship between them and we wouldn't really know you know which data set should be 
on the x versus the y you can plot it either way but usually the independent variable we think about on uh, the x but if i plot this out if you look at it we're now saying hmm that looks like a straight line that looks like a perfect kind of correlation but if you add the uh this one out here mathematically our correlation calculation comes out to zero correlation even though there's just a, clearly a fundamental uh, relationship between these lines. So if this was a real data set in real life, would we really want to say that there's no relationship between these two data sets? Probably not. There's probably something going on with this one data point that messed everything up. There's, you know, so that's why, again, anything we're looking at with statistics, we can't really look at it just from one angle. Typically, we want to look at it from pictorial standpoints, uh, data standpoint analysis and other things. And this is what often people frustrate. It frustrates people with statistics because they say, well, that makes it confusing and you can't really nail anything down that way and whatnot because people can lie about it and stuff. But again, that's the same with words, like anything that you communicate with, it's the same. People say stuff and you can't just listen to what they say because a lot of people don't say what they what the truth <laughs> or or even if they're trying to say the truth it may not be right so you have to kind of dig down and that's just the way it is so in any case if i add a trend line over here you can see it's a perfectly straight line it's like what because it, it should you would think it would be uh there'd be some kind of relationship but no and then i'm going to hit the drop down straight line let's make it orange like i normally do I like to have the trend line be orange because that's the trendy thing for lines these days. If you're going to a, the party, a line party, then you should be dressed up in orange because that's what trend lines, that's trendy. Okay, we get it. So there's that. Let's go ahead and do this calculation then uh, uh, with our data set so we can do it this way so here's our data analysis if you don't have that it's in the file tab it's in the options it's in the add-ins i'm doing this fast because we've seen this before the excel add-ins and then there's the tool pack if you want to run with the cool cats you need the analysis tool pack all right so then we're going to say then uh we're going to say data and add the tool pack and we want to calculate the correlation data points are going to be these data points and i'm going to say okay i pick the label so i'm going to pick the label and check that off and then where do i want to put it not there i'm going to put it where does it need to be it's going to be right there in r r1 say okay and then boom so you can see there's a zero correlation between the x and the y here now if i did the same one less the last data point let's see what happens right i'll get a much different result so i'm going to say data output data analysis correlation and let's say that i take my data but i pick it up from here to here and i don't include that last point what do you think is going to happen Let's see, labels, output, where do I want this one? It needs to be in a different spot. You can't put it on top of the other one, Excel. Put it over here. And then, okay. So now you get a one, which is a perfect correlation. So this is this is the 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 without the last point. So total uh, data set without with without last point maybe i should put this down here and or maybe i should put this right up here that's what i should do and then i'll make this a little bit wider and there we have it okay let's make this smaller okay so that's the point that's the point so we need to we need to uh, we need to look into it a little bit uh, deeper. Oftentimes, still can't just rely on. So if I, for example, if I was to use this thing and I just spit out this number, and that's all I did, then uh, then I would say, oh, there's zero correlation. But if I just look at the data with this small bit of data, 
say, well, that like, sounds kind of funny. If I graphed the data, I'd be like, huh, that looks like it's straight line, but it's got a zero core. That seems kind of weird. And then if I actually did the z-scores like this, I'm much more likely to say it looks maybe there's something more going on that we should be looking at. All right, let's make it nice. Let's put some blue borders around this home tab font group. I'm going to go to the blue drop down. If you don't have that blue drop down, it's in the standard blue. And let's put some borders around it. And then we'll do that all the way across blue bordered border blue border blue border blue. And let's do it here too for the border blue border blue and here too for the border blue border blue and then here too for the border blue let's make this top bit black and white let's go to the black drop down and the white for the header and this one's going to be black white for the header these all these could probably be thinner because uh, you just have a one in there that doesn't ones don't take a lot of space and then I can select all the skinnies I'm holding down control and then letting go of control holding down control so we can even out the skinnies so we have uniform skinniness all the skinnies should be uniform okay and then I can check the spelling because I think I got correlation correct this time look at that I know how to spell correlation now you spell it stupidly because that's the way that English does it with an e there when even though you say it with an a because that's how that's how you say it in American I speak American anyway you speak English I speak Amer okay whatever